All right. All right. What is Q factor? For sake. What is Q factor? Mm. Okay, I hate Q factor, the word Q factor, the expression Q factor. It's just one of, the, one of these buzzwords. Buzzwords, that's something that uh, somebody commented on like, the last video, isn't it? Not many people know that what Q, what the Q in Q factor stands for. Do you know what it stands for? I don't know. I vaguely know that Q factor is how wide your pedals are. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so Q factor, some people think it stands for quadricep. I don't know why. But the Q in Q factor actually stands for quack. Because it goes back to like, the old days where uh, if you had your feet really far apart, you walked like a duck. According to Sheldon Brown, who is the sort of fountain of all knowledge of things bike fits, where I learned to bike fit, not really. Q factor and starts are two different things. Q factor is basically refers to how far apart the cranks are. So if you consider BB30, for example, is one standard. Uh, Campagnolo's standard is also a, a narrower Q factor. I, in bike fitting, I don't really talk about Q factor. I really talk about stance because I don't fit bikes, I fit people. Stance is a massively important consideration in, in, in bike fitting. Mostly because it has ramifications mostly in things like saddle interaction. So you get quite a lot of people who, uh, if their stance is insufficient, feet too close together, they'll end up with hot spots in the saddle. So, uh, and, and equally an asymmetrical interaction with the saddle. For example, this is a pressure mapping result that I've got from a little while ago, but you can see that there's an imbalance in pressure in the saddle from, this is from left to right. Um, when we increase the stance, the pressure balances. Now, if I'm honest, I don't really know the physiological reason why, but if you think about this, if you've got someone who's tight through the hips, or it's just a bigger individual in, in general, and uh, anybody that does any squatting in the gym or anything like that, you consider that certain people will need a wider stance or a smaller stance. Think about the individual, the, the type of individual that you are. If you're a skinny little tiny man, like you, your cleats are set up so your feet are really close together because you're a little guy, so you need your feet close together. Same with small women. If you're a bigger individual, you're probably gonna need a bigger stance. Uh, furthermore, if you have any kind of biomechanical restrictions, like you know tightness through the hips, generally people who sit at the desk most of the day uh, tend to need to have a wider stance. Okay, so a couple of things that might um, lead you to think why you might need a wider stance. If your knees abduct at the top of the stroke, they come out at the top of the stroke, uh, that's usually uh, driven by hip tightness or even an insufficient stance. The, the single most common pedal system that I sell is an extended Shimano SPDSL, SPDSLE. Mostly because most of the people that I tend to treat are age 35 to 60, so they're desk all day, carrying a few extra pounds, i.e. they're normal human beings. They tend to need this, this, this wider stance. Furthermore, even if they don't need the, start, um, the stance maxed at the cleat, having a longer axle pedal actually allows them to have the cleat slap bang in the middle of the shoe. So it puts less strain on the shoe. So you gotta be pretty careful which pedals you buy because some, especially when they're discounted online and that kind of thing, yeah, super, super long, yeah, and people just don't want them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a guy that come in uh, a couple of years ago. He had like the longest axled speed plays, but it was like a beam pole. And he basically pedaled, he pedaled like this. <laughs> His his feet were so far apart. Something to consider uh, takes you off. If you you can you can play around with stance uh, just at the cleat. You, so you you can adjust stance in several ways. At the cleat, at the, um, at the pedal, I by using a, a pedal washer. How many pedal washers you can use will be determined by the pedal system. So for example, Shimano has a relatively short thread. Uh, looks have a slightly longer thread, so you can use up to three millimeters of pedal washers on the look. Probably only one and a half on a Shimano or a Speedplay. Shimano and Speedplay both also have axle options. That being the third potential way of, of adjusting. When you're adjusting stance at the cleat, it's a slightly counterintuitive uh, adjustment. So in order to reduce your stance, we've got the cleat set up as far towards the outside of the foot as you can possibly go. What that's doing is it's bringing the foot close to the bike. To increase the stance, it's gonna be the other way around. Have you gotta be careful which crank you use? Do different cranks have different widths of Q factor? They, they do, but I, I don't think it is so much of an issue that it's something that people really ought to be concerned about. I mean, I wouldn't, for example, say to someone, oh, you're a bigger guy, you need a wider stance, therefore you can't ride Campank, or you can't ride BB30. But that might be a consideration to take in terms of what type of pedal system do you use. Let, let's talk about clean location a little bit, because you, you, there's this kind of myth that I want to dispel about cleat location. You get people who have moved their cleat a little bit and then all of a sudden they get pain. 
it's not because of your cleats. You might do, but it's usually because your position's bad in the first place. A couple of potential uh, discomforts that one might experience from, from their cleats being set up incorrectly. So the, the most common one is discomfort along the lateral aspect of the foot, on the outside of the foot. Disclaimer, there are many, many drivers for, for that particular discomfort. Is it in one foot, is it in both? If you get discomfort on the outside of both of your feet, it's possibly driven by stance width. Because essentially what happens is you end up driving to the outside of your foot a little bit like this. It's like a rolling action. Yeah, exactly. Essentially you're, you're spilling over the side of the shoe. However, that outside discomfort of the foot is, is also driven by insufficient cleat placement, excessive pronation, not, not enough arch support. If it's in one foot, it's usually just right listening to one side. If you've got pressure on the outside of the foot, it might be an indication that your, your feet are too close together. Particularly if you are a bigger individual uh, or you have any history of hip trauma or if you've got, or you've got hip, hip tightness. If you get discomfort on the outside of your knees, both knees, uh, could be, you know, again, could be because your, your feet are too far apart, so particularly it's referencing smaller individuals. Um, if your feet are too far apart, it quite often results in a kind of valgus knee, right? So you, or a knock knee. Uh, and again, that, that, can be, that can be reduced or improved by, by bringing the foot kind of close to the, close to the bike. I guess the, the thing to take away from this is think about the type of individual that you are. Think about your morphology, right? Think about are you a skinny guy or a gal or are you a bigger, bigger one. That will give you some idea as to where you want to put in these cleats, all right? Um, one final thing is uh, you can do no harm by taking the cleat as far back on the shoe as it will possibly go. Generally speaking, do you want your shoe back? Yeah, thanks. Okay.